Aloha. Welcome to Think Tech Hawaii. This is Thursday, September the 30th, 2021, and you're watching the show Politics for the People. I'm uh, Stephanie Stoll Dalton, and I'm your host for this weekly show. Now, today we have an assembly of informed guests to discuss USA's leadership, legislation, and governing in politically unruly times like we have now. And uh, in, this, in these times, uh, we are looking to see how our leadership uh, fulfills promises and, and how our president can secure his own legacy. I welcome these guests we have to discuss and analyze these matters, and they are Jay Fidel and uh, Winston Welch and Tim Apicello. So welcome to the program, guests. Thank you. Good. Okay. Now I said these are politically unruly times in the intro, and I want to know, Jay, do you agree that Biden's infrastructure bill is threatened today due to his lack of leverage, not only over a senior senator, but also a first-term senator, and that this contributes to the unruliness of our times? Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. I don't. I don't think it's going to pass. Period. <clears throat> and if you uh, if you look at what the uh, leadership is saying, I don't. I don't think either the one trillion or the three point five trillion bills are going to pass. But good news, if you guys haven't heard, flash message uh, is that uh, both the Senate and the House have approved the debt ceiling change, yeah, and they, uh, that that is on Joe Biden's signature desk yeah, for signature. That. Yeah, well, that, you, you know what? I, I, I honestly think that's not nearly as important because that that had to happen. You know, all the forces were in play. All the, um, the criticism was was coming down on them. They had to do it uh, in the Senate, especially. <clears throat> so um, where were we on infrastructure? Where are we on all of Joe Biden's uh, initiatives? The answer is nowhere. Exactly. And it's really sad to see the Democrats fighting among themselves because that's what they're doing. And you know, you can say, well, this is all a minuet and they got to get through their, you know, their contention under the blanket here. But, but the bottom line is, is almost um, October. And um, that's, you know, what is that? Going into the 10th month after the inauguration and we don't have it yet. So um, um, I, with all the news and all the contention, all the unruliness, as you say, not only with the Republicans and the Democrats, but with the Democrats and the Democrats, uh, it, it's not going to happen. And Joe Biden is going to lose as a result. And the Democrats in general are going to lose as a result. And that's no, no less than ridiculous. Well, tell me about the lack of leverage Joe Biden has over these um, senators, these Democratic senators. So what what is contributing to oh, you mean mansion and uh, uh, yeah i mean in the politically unruly times that means you know he's getting a lot of oh, well, i think i think there's much more under the hood that we don't know about and maybe it's right and uh, staring us in the face it's in plain view with mansion and uh what's the name kristen uh, cinema um those guys are like republicans in democrat clothes uh they come from Republican states, they have a Republican constituency that they don't want to offend, maybe they want to please. Um, and they say they're Democrats, but they're screwing up the whole process. The two of them are holding up the country, the democracy, and our economic future. And this goes by day after day. The, the people who are you know, just watching this casually say, wait, what are they doing? Um, are they in there to act like legislators or are they in there simply to delay things until the Biden administration falls apart for lack of credibility? And I am beginning, well, more than beginning, I am feeling it's the latter. Uh, whatever their ideological principles are, and I question that, the fact is that their actions um, belay um, their, in, their uh, intentions. And their intention seems to be very clearly to delay things. And they're doing a good job at that, but they're blowing up the whole system in the process. I forgive them not. 
Yes. All right. Uh, Winston, um, is this a situation um, that's unforgivable, but is it a situation that still has any room for Biden to team build at this point? Can what 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 might there be in your in your thinking? Humble opinion. Uh, you know, Joe Biden is uh, even I think in 2016, there was an interview with Mitch McConnell who said, um, you know, uh, call Joe. That, that, that was like the code word or something along those lines for it's time to make the deal and get the job done. So, you know, these are well old colleagues and uh, old colleagues uh, who've worked together over the years to, you know, all these shenanigans that, that we never know anything about and the horse trading that goes on. And that's how the business of the nation is done. And that's how it's always been done. We have some wrinkles now that we couldn't have anticipated even five years ago of how this is. Let's call them wrinkles as euphemistic, um, more like uh, canyons that uh, if you're not careful, you fall into. And we've fallen into several and there's not just one. Uh, Joe Biden is, you know, doing the best he can, as I've said. He's got a lot on his plate. Um, you know, some people were trying to saw NBC, uh, or I think it was, it called him out for, um, you know, contradicting General Miley and say, oh, what, about Afghanistan. You know what? The man's allowed to get a couple details wrong at his position. He's not... He's an honorable person. He's doing the best he can with uh, enormous problems. That said, he's well, what can he do with mansion and cinema? He's got he, a lot he, of. He's not been them. able to control them at all. They're Zero. not part of his. I don't know how he deals with them, but ex, except that perhaps he um, makes sure that there's special extra allocations to West Virginia and Arizona because maybe that would entice them. Um, uh, I, I don't know because well, they're not, uh, they're not working awesome. for the good of the party. I think he hasn't offered that. I mean, is it possible that he has not offered to uh, grease the pig here? He's definitely got some, you know, step one, step two, step three stuff, and they may be waiting for step three, uh, for all we know. But you know, as you you, you mentioned Jay, that the debt ceiling deal that was a that was obviously going to happen. Nobody has an interest in the government shutting down, and if they do, then it would just make Joe Biden look better um, at the end of the day. So that one went through. This other stuff, uh, I would. I'd like to see some action, but you know, we really haven't heard from the progressives very much. They squawked a little bit this week, um, but basically they've kept their heads down this whole time. Now, there may be a lot of grumbling behind the scenes, but they realize that if they don't get whatever they've got passed and, and just leave well enough alone, that the whole thing's going to collapse. I, I And I think that they understand that. Well, what, well, Tim, what, what is Biden ignoring? or dismissing or not knowing that could save his bills on this round? Reality. <laughs> <laughs> um, let, me, let me further fill in the blanks on that answer. Um, first off, let me go back memory lane. Now, I think Nancy Pelosi does a pretty good job. In fact, I think she's known for doing a pretty good job. But there was a day when there was a guy named Tip O'Neill. And Tip O'Neill would have all his new congressmen that had been recently elected, he'd gather them all in one room. And the first thing Tip O'Neill would say is, in the House, if you want to get along, you go along. So it was a, basically an introduction to say, I'm running this place, you're not. You're going to step in line and you're going to do my bidding. And those are the days of old politics where it was reeled with a heavy hand. And, and, and Joe Biden and you know, uh, Chuck Schumer, uh, they don't have the chops for that kind of stuff. They're very permissive. They're very uh, touchy-feely on what you want and what's going to make you feel good. Well, uh, Tip O'Neill wouldn't be a part of that crowd. And um, Nancy Pelosi actually is a little more like Tip O'Neill. But it's a matter of saying, stop your personal agendas. We have the nation's business to get done. And you're not falling in line. So well, it's they don't call them, they don't call them minority whips, majority whips in the House and Senate for nothing. The operative word is whip. And um, that means you have to get people to fall in line. And um, I forget her name, uh, Jobaya Paul from Washington. Um, she says she represents 95 other representatives on the progressive side. Time to get her in line. This whole 
this whole infrastructure deal is could be done for one trillion dollars. That's called an accomplishment. You work on accomplishments. It's not the whole enchilada at one time. It's like baseball. I use a baseball analogy. Um, you could either go for the grand slam and and the score is zero zero, or you could go for a first base or a second base hit and, and slowly get on base and slowly score. And that's the problem with um, this particular uh, administration is they're going for the big home runs. They're trying to get two major bills done at once, and that's not going to work. Well, well let, me, let me add this thought. Yeah, Jake, um, you know, when this came up, uh, what, a month ago, maybe, maybe, Tim, six weeks ago, when, when Biden said, okay, we got, we got the one trillion and we got the 3.5, and I'm going to link them. The one trillion I know I can get through because it's, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's providing uh, pork to everybody. And the, uh, the 3.5 trillion, I'm going to make that a reconciliation bill. And I'm not going to pass that bill uh, unless um, oh, I'm not going. I'm not going to. I'm not going to pass the one trillion bill unless you pass my reconciliation bill. Bad idea, Jay. A really bad idea from the get go. Really bad idea from the get go. And, and that was if you if you looked at that carefully, just as a human being kind of person, um, you said this is never going to happen. They're never going to let him do that. It doesn't take. Uh, you know, Mitch McConnell to, to, to figure a way out of that box. Anybody could. And I said yeah. to myself, and we all talked about it, that this isn't going to work. It's, it's not been done before. It's not going to be done now. Nobody's going to go along with it. And the public is, at best, really going, to, going to be hey. confused about it. So hey, where we are now is a culmination of all of that. And P.S., it isn't going to work. Bad idea then, bad idea now. The best solution is take the one trillion, you know, and, and wait on the rest of it. Um, and guess what, Jay? The one trillion is going to get done. Well, let's J see. Jajaya Paul and her progressives are going to fall in line. We've just not seen it in the public statements they're making on MSNBC, CNN, and the like. Um, they're going to fall in line, and one trillion gets done. Now, have I ever been wrong before? Absolutely. Will I be wrong on this one? Possibly. Do I think it gets done? I do. So, Winston, um, there seems to be another factor here involved, which is there's a, a, a counter play between cinema and um, and mansion. So uh, mansion has some uh, rationale he offers and it has to do with how much is in the bill. And it seems like nobody really seems to know how much the bill is so that mansion's point is about that and cinema seems to have no point and nobody can suss out what what is her rationale well you, you saw the piece on uh, on rachel maddow yesterday this this is quotable for the rest of time so some reporter asked uh, cinema where she where she stood on things <laughs> and she said oh i'm standing in front of the elevator on things um you think about that it's 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 moronic yeah. So, Winston, what do you think? What does it mean to you or how does it stack up with what you're reading? Uh, you know, what, what I've read about her is it, it seems that she's sort of into it for self-aggrandizement. There, there doesn't seem to be any rhyme or reason or policy or principle behind it. It, it might just be a look at me moment um, and I don't know, give her a shiny toy, whatever that whatever it takes to get it done. We have two people that that we need to placate. So placate them. These are not, Joe Manson's not a dictator. She's not a dictator, uh, they, but they do need to be placated and, uh, and then move on. And, and she's already, as uh, people are saying, being primaried um, or will be soon enough. And groups that have supported her have said, whoa, you got a couple screws loose there. Like, okay, take a principle and we can understand that. But otherwise, we really don't get why what you're doing and why. Um, Joe Manchin, he seems to be at least have some basis for his reality of opposing things, whether it's wanting to have, uh, uh, you know, an olden day style Senate where you don't break the filibuster or uh, or whether it's, uh, you know, that his reality is he's the only Democrat who could be elected in West Virginia in this days in a state where Donald Trump had one of the highest um, uh, spreads in winning uh, uh, or in losing. I guess he won the state, but he's very popular there. And Joe Manchin realizes his politics on the ground. It's very retail and he's uh, popular, but he seems to be a little bit more principled. Give him whatever he needs. 
how many people live in West Virginia? 10 million? I think, I think he's a charade, Winston. He, he, co- he wants to come off as having a certain reasonable element to him, but he's not negotiating. And the result between the two of them, uh, Manchin and Cinema, is he exactly has- the same. Whatever their personalities and styles are, n- neither, they're both standing in the way of a deal. They're both intransigent. However, you make you know, Jay. I I got I got to interrupt Jay because he has said it very clearly. Goes three point five trillion is out of the question. He just was quoted that one point five trillion is within the ballpark. But also, um, there's ideas that that he's thrown out there. It's called means testing. uh, That you know to say that you're 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 earning three hundred thousand a year and you're going to get child credit from the federal government that the taxpayers pay for. Uh, He doesn't agree for that, and neither do I. So he's talking about means testing and a, a 1.5 trillion. Um, remember, one trillion is a million million. That's <laughs> a lot of money. You know, maybe they need to amend this to say that every person yeah. who knows anybody who coal mines in West Virginia is going to get a million dollar job retraining and education benefit to be well used there you go right income. there yes something like you know, that and you have we're going to put jobs we're going to put jobs in west virginia a lot of solar jobs maybe That's the right. ford motor company wants right. to put jobs in right. west virginia okay. right we're talking about two birds here okay biden's got two birds cinema and mansion and you're hearing what good stuff is being said here uh what what um tim is saying and and winston so what's the stone that biden has to get to get two birds with one stone is well theoretically stone? theoretically yeah. biden could say okay okay uh let's do 1.5 and we'll have the, this this metric on people trying to take advantage and we'll we'll put that in the bill today and get it done you think do you think you guys think really that do. would end it do you really think that would end it no, you have Jab Jab Jayapal from Washington to say no. I'm I'm going to hold my breath until I get my three point five trillion. Um, no, you don't get to hold your breath, uh, uh, Congressman Jayapal, Jab- because you're not running the show. Well, exactly. And Tim, when is it going to get down to also punching these numbers up? Because I'm reading that they're up to five, six million, uh, gajillion, okay, five, six. And it's not 3.5. It's nowhere near 3.5. Whether it's paid for or not is not the issue. But of course, that always is an issue, even when it's true that it's already paid for. So what about the, the numbers? So if they have, are they starting to talk about then how much it really is? And then that that's the stone, right? Nancy, for- Nancy Pelosi needs to channel her inner Tip O'Neill and start cracking the whip on, on um on the problems in the House. Right now, it's up to the House. I mean, you have a bill that had 10 Republicans come over to the other aisle and say, we'll support this, and they did. They passed it. They passed a $1 trillion bill. It's in the House, ready to go. Uh, Nancy Pelosi needs to channel her inner Tip O'Neill and get uh, Congressman Congresswoman J- Japayapal to get on board now. Well, see, this is the conundrum, okay? Because when you're saying drop the link, decouple what? them. Oh. Do one at a time. Don't condition one on yes. the other. Yes, is decouple it. Yes, yes, so, decouple it. Absolutely. That would be a huge loss of face for Biden. But the problem. Oh, well, oh, well. But, he but, wants, if he wants an accomplishment, a little loss of face is going to go a long way. And it's not just loss of face, they may never get back to it. So that the hard show is the holding point is that they won't get back to it. If they don't do the vote. You know, I'm sorry, maybe I've had too much coffee, but you know, our democracy is in play with this. And if we show the world that nothing gets done as a, as a matter of democracy and a democratic process and nothing gets done term after term after term, maybe Trump's supporters go, we'll accept an autocrat because at least we get things done. And that's starting to look more palatable. That's starting to look more palatable to the American people. Yeah. But my question to you is just suppose for a moment that neither Chapayapal nor uh, Mitch McConnell nor Biden um, nor mm, any of them um, uh, have listened to Think Tech Hawaii. Let's assume that. (laughs) Okay, so the question then is, What is going to happen? Because the reality, as I see it, I'd be interested in how you guys feel. The reality is we're going to spin around on this 
and it is going to dissolve into a kind of liquid sludge and it isn't going to get done and we aren't going to have either bill and we are going to suffer mightily. No. It's well, different It's different than the debt ceiling where the oh, pressures, political no. pressures, public right. pressures that are different. But the other, Winston, answer some make make some sense of this we know that trump has succeeded enormously because he has insight and talent in one area and that is that he knows how to use the system against itself and he as a result what he he can do all of that in public because he's using all of the legitimate means so how does Biden and, and Pelosi and Schumer, how did they get smartened up here to be able to do something like that? Winston, do you have any sense of that in your way of- I, I wish I did because they, uh, they're they not playing with the same uh, set of cards. And Donald Trump is a brilliant politician. He is able to, uh, he's like a, a uh, he's a masterful storyteller. Um, he tells stories and he he captivates his audiences. He bamboozles them and he channels like a, this is this id ego thing where he, he just says what he wants to say, when he wants to say it, how he wants to say it. There's no repercussions for it. You don't have that coming from the other side. You have sort of rational, sane, thoughtful people trying to have a conversation with, with those that, that are not, but are under a spell of, of something. Of, of one person really but there's been a lot of buy-in this is not just uh donald trump as you see in the the polls that that, that have come out uh, there was one that i've seen uh, that uh now was commissioned by uh john bolton's uh, super PAC. but it said that uh, ron DeSantis was essentially tied with with donald trump now in popularity in florida whether that's true or not the point is that we have unleashed in our nation the sort of this um say anything do anything and it doesn't matter i got mine and and the the sort of good of the nation and good for the uh, for all of us has been sort of tossed out and we need to regain that sense that's where we we need to go back and i think there's a lot of disenfranchised former republic they call themselves republicans because they don't have a a place to go anymore but they are republicans and they're they're principled Republicans, they're conservative people in our society who believe uh, perhaps differently than we might on certain issues, but uh, they're, they, need a, they need a place to call home. And someone's going to give them a home, whether it's a Liz Cheney or a, a Kitzinger or somebody else like that, but they will find that home. And these other forces out there can take the party where they want to go, and maybe it leads to some schism, maybe they join Democrats, maybe we'll break into five different parties in this nation. I really don't know what will happen, but I wouldn't predict the latter, but it would well, be an interesting choice. Here's a question from Chuck. Um, so let's see, Je uh, let's see, Tim, the question is, besides Biden's push, who else needs to step up and what needs to happen to get the funding and voting legislation passed? Well, I've kind of said that already, but let me let me put a little more um, okay. uh, twinkle dust on it, if you will. Yeah. You know, um, getting these senators and, and House representatives to fall in line isn't just a matter of incentives and what can we do for your district to make you feel better? Um, you know, Winston in the past has said a golden, a golden toilet in every household in West Virginia. Um, incentives, incentives are one way of doing it, but also disincentives. It's a very effective means of um, getting people to fall in line to vote for a bill. And if that means that the DNC is gonna retract any and all, every dollar for your reelection, so be it, pull it. If that means what Donald Trump's uh, Donald Trump's playbook is, I'm going to put another candidate in there and run against you and fund them graciously, and and have them out outrun you because they're just gotten so much uh, campaign dollars from uh, the Democratic Party, and that's what we're going to make happen. So it's a, it's a combination of incentives and disincentives that makes this thing happen. Uh, Joe Biden doesn't know how to make a disincentive because he doesn't have a mean bone in his body. But, um, but that's politics, okay? And that's what this is about. And I have talked to Republican Republicans and they've said that what happens is they take them in that room with that major uh, leader that you referenced earlier. And they say, 
Did you know that we can put out stories on all of you, on all of these things that are behind the shield here that nobody knows about under the radar? And if you don't cooperate, I mean, this is getting now down to like the dirty trick stuff. And the Republicans, that's what they do, according to the Republicans. That, that, that is what they do. And I'm not saying that's what Democrats should do. But there is certainly um, the pathway to say, OK, you're going out on your own. You're really bucking against the entire Democratic administration here. Um, we're not going to fund you in the future. And you'll see how far that gets you in your reelection process. So that's not dirty tricks. That's just saying uh, we decide where the money goes and to which candidate receives it. And um, you're not going to get any more. So, you know, think about that before you you get on CNN and, and MSNBC and say how you're going to hold your breath and hold the whole entire process hostage. Uh, think about that before you get on next time. Well, you know what, Jay? Does uh, Biden have, well, I was going to say the credibility. Does Biden have the, what? I, I don't want to say bad words. Does Biden have the strength? Can he pull his strength up to prevent um, this di dissolution? Of yeah, the Stephanie, I think that's a really excellent question. Um, and if we were starting here on January 20th and Biden set up a tough tone, the kind of tone that Tim is talking about, Tip O'Neill tone, if you want, um, you know, then, then that would have set the stage for a lot of things. But instead, <clears throat> he's been Mr. Nice Guy. And, uh, and that's to his credit, of course, but it's, it's not the Tip O'Neill style. And the question is, two, just two questions inherent in that. And this is more like social psychology. Number one is, does he have the strength? He's been making deals and compromising and capitulating all his professional life for you know, decades. Does he have the strength now to take a hard, a hard position and push people around and make this happen in the way that Donald Trump or Tip O'Neill might do it? And the answer is no. We, we know, we, we know him, we've watched him every day. We've, we've heard all his moves and the answer is he's not like that. He's Mr. Nice Guy. Um, the other question is, even if he were, even if he were able to change his tune and be tougher, the public sees him and his adversaries and other people in the you know, political universe in Washington, they know what he is like we do. They know what his inclinations are. They know he's a Mr. Nice Guy. It's not like he could change midstream. He cannot change horses now. He is what he is. So even if he changed his mind and said, I better do Tip O'Neill, or for that matter, Donald Trump, nobody's going to believe it. And they're going to figure at the end of the day, Joe Biden is going to do his natural thing, which is Mr. Nice Guy. That's why... My, my prediction, which is syllogistic, it's logical, is that yes, we, we could find a way out of this, but the reality is we're not gonna do it because we don't have the, may I say, leadership, either in the Democratic Party or in the executive. Okay. And, and for that reason, it's not gonna work. Okay, let's go one round to finish off here briefly each, but one of the things we do have in Biden is smart. He is a smart guy. OK, so back to the point about Trump and his using the system uh, to get his way. Think in your last comments about those two factors, that he is he is uh, a smart, smart, experienced and knows the system. So can he think about it in terms of using it? Favor? So what do you think, Winston, for your last comment? I think we need to let Joe Biden be Joe Biden, do what he does best. We elected Joe Biden to be Joe Biden. And so while he there's obvious drawbacks to not, um, you know, carrying the big stick in this and, and wielding it, um, let's see how this plays out. And it may not be that everything uh, gets done what, what what what's wanted to be done, but there's a good chance that he's going to make some deals right here at the very end um and 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 horse trade as he always has and produce some good effect for uh america and its people and all of its people he is the president of the united states and all of the people in it he's not a blue president he's not a red president he is the president and i think uh if people can look to that and see that and understand that, uh, that helps his credibility with the people that he's got to work with and that includes especially Sistema and Manchin. 
All right, Tim. You know, remember back in 2007 in the financial, um, the financial institutions in the United States and around the world were crumbling. And um, President Bush said, I'm going to create what is called TARP. And that is a bailout for financial institutions. As critical as that was that time, I mean, dire times, um, the bailout package was 780 billion. Oh. So let's fast forward to 2021. Who in their right mind and reality thinks without any fight or, or conflict that they're gonna pass a $3.5 trillion wish list of social programs? Only in your wildest dreams would you think that's gonna pass without being you know, negotiated or cut back. And again, I'm gonna blame, I'm gonna blame the uh, progressive Democrats on this. They, they cried that we, are, we were at 6 trillion and we, we, we cut it down to 3.5. Well, yeah. what, what planet are you living on that you think that 3.5 trillion is gonna sail through Congress um, without getting cut back? So uh -huh. my answer is the Jajayapals of the world need to look at reality and say, let's get something done. 1.5 trillion still a major, major accomplishment. Plus, don't forget the $1 trillion on hard infrastructure stuff. That's $2.5 trillion. Very good. Yeah, Jay. Okay, wrap it up, Jay. Yeah, on your last comment. Okay, well, you know, I like to integrate on a lot of the things that uh, we've said here today, and that, that's this. If you take the face, you know, element out of this and you just talk about a rational negotiation, uh, then what you're talking about is a number that is uh, somewhere between 1.5 and uh, what is it, 3.5, um, and, uh, and and closer to 1.5, honestly. Um, and uh, you satisfy other you know non-qualitative uh, elements of the bill. Then what you get is everybody gets a certain amount of face, uh, and there's a bill with a lot of social benefit in it, and the two bills are linked and they do pass. This is a rational approach. Uh, people will lose face on it. Um, but uh, the progressives will have to capitulate. Um, but bottom line is uh, that's what should happen in a, an objective negotiation going forward. And we have to get to that. Problem yeah. is that face and politics are linked. Everybody has staked out territory. And for that reason, uh, although I think that's the solution, I'm not all that optimistic. But that uh, is getting um, think tech's machete out for them to show them how they can chop their way through um, um, in, 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 a, in a manner that is, is truly negotiation and capitulation and letting go of your darling. So there is a way to get through. And that's a hopeful ending to the program. So um, it is aloha time and we'll have to wrap it up. This, uh, this is um, think tech. Hawaii, and this show is Politics for the People. And thanks to the panel of guests, Tim Apicello, Winston Welch, and Jay Fidel for their informative conversation. And I'm Stephanie Stoll Dalton, your host for Politics for the People. See you next week, Thursday, at the same Hawaii Standard Time. Mahalo, everyone, and thank you, and, and aloha. Aloha. <laughs>